Welcome back to SV Blown Away. In this week's episode, we tackle some safety issues. <laughs> I'm Natalie. And I'm Ian. And we are sailing around on our 1978 steel catch. Follow our adventures each week on YouTube. This week you join us in Leros Marina in the Dodecanese of Greece. Have you been shopping for shoes again? Yeah, all shoes. Sorry, what shoes have you bought now? Varnish shoes, pearling shoes, uh, bridge pump shoes. Hmm, sounds like a lot of shoes to me. So in the, uh, in the tube is our furler, a part of our furling system anyway, and the rest of it, our varnish and other bits and pieces to finish the job is in that box just there next to the midget. midget. Well, it's like Christmas on board Blown Away. We came back from our shopping trip, found our new life raft. Well, 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 look what we got. Time to replace our life raft. Our new raft is slightly different size to the old one and obviously I don't want this thing moving around at sea so we are now going to adjust this cradle to take our new life raft. So Igor, why are you adjusting the life raft bracket? Because the life raft is a different dimension to our last life raft. You probably need to speak a bit higher. Our life raft is a different dimension to the last one. You think they'll just mock me. So we have to change the size of our cradle. Mm. Which one won't the back one? Back one. Is it jamming on the other one that goes in? I don't think so. Well that could be. There's only that much space before it gets to a squished bit. Well that goes all the way through. Squishes is compressed. Yes, you're right. So we're going to have to cut these off. Oh my god. Why is life never straightforward? It's a boat job. And if we want that central central, we're going to have to do both ends. Yeah. I'm not feeling the love for that. I think we just leave it slightly off set. <laughs> As with every boat job, it is two minutes away from being a nightmare. So the cradle, when we tried to adjust it, was already at minimum. The new box is smaller than the old box, so we've had to go at it with an angle grinder. So we now have our hydrostatic release. This is the strap that holds the life raft in position, yet to be tightened up. We have a painter line here, which is free of the cradle. I've seen these things threaded through the cradle before now, which is obviously a bad idea. Um, we've got our weak link here, which is the red piece of plastic, which will break in the event of the life raft floating free and our hydrostatic release. Welcome on board Blown Away. We are currently in the process of installing our new life raft. Now I'm going to go over the specifications of this life raft and the reason we chose this particular model. Um, but today we're going to do the install onto the boat and explain why it's situated where it's situated. I used to be a volunteer for the RNLI as a uh, sea safety advisor. So I would go onto other people's boats and uh, use my experience as a, an assistant to help them think about the best places to position safety equipment. Because many people put their life rafts in what I would deem to be incredibly ridiculous positions. Um, you need to think about how you're going to launch your life raft and what will happen if your boat sinks. So our life raft is mounted midships and it's on the coach roof of our deck saloon. Because Blown Away has a fixed keel, it's not going to fall off because it is the boat. The whole boat is the keel. So when this vessel sinks, it's very likely that it will sink in an upright position. So for us, we would be on this piece of deck as the boat is sinking. 
So as a vessel is moving, it's pitching or it's rolling from side to side, you are not going to be standing on the bow trying to launch a life raft. If you have a swim platform, the potential for injury off of the swim platform is quite high. If you look at any of the rescue vessels that I used to helm as coxswain, um, the rescue position is always midships. And the reason for that is the least amount of movement is the middle of the vessel. Now Blown Away has two gates. She has a gate either side. So this life raft can be dragged and launched through either of those gates from a midship's position. It's also in a place where it's highly unlikely to be washed away. Uh, you will often see life rafts mounted on push pits or on side rails or in positions where large building seas could potentially take the life raft off of the vessel. So it's really important when you mount your life raft to think about how your vessel is likely to sink in what so we are using a canister type of life raft um, and the reason I buy a canister is that I don't want a valise life raft in an exposed position. Uh, so the casing of this is fiberglass, it's not a plastic cover. A valise has a plastic cover, so the sun will degrade that cover. And it, now a valise life raft, it's quite common to see them in lockers. And because you don't use them very often, those life rafts end up at the very bottom of the life underneath the inflatable toys, underneath the barbecue, underneath all of your ropes, etc. So if you're on a passage, you really need to take that valise life raft out and put it somewhere that is accessible. And generally speaking, with a valise life raft, it's never attached to the boat. It's not on a float free, the hammer. You physically have to pull that out of the locker and launch it yourself. The reason I prefer a canister is I can put it on a float free handmar device and the handmar will launch this life raft. So how does that work? Well, this is a device that I'm talking about right here. And the way it works is like this. The black ring here is attached to a strong point on the deck. In this case, it would be a shackle, which is attached to the frame. The yellow loop attaches to the strap that holds the life raft canister into the cradle. This hammer device is basically a cutting blade. There is a diaphragm inside of here that will sense the water pressure. So as the yacht starts to sink, the water pressure will build. This handmar device will then cut this white cord so that the life raft is free to float out of the cradle. Once this has automatically cut this white cord, the painter line attached to the weak link will be enough resistance to inflate your life raft. So as your yacht is sinking under the surface, going down, it's going to get to six meters, if that is the length of the painter line, that tug on the painter line will inflate your life raft. That life raft attached to a weak link, because of the additional buoyancy from the life raft, which is now inflated, your life raft will break this weak link. Your life raft will then surface on the water, ready for you to climb in. You can also do this manually. So if I had time, which I don't think we would, I would launch this manually. And I'm going to launch it midships. The reason I launch it midships is that I can step into it through the gates. Because if you can, the best way to get into a life raft is dry. And our additional equipment is going to be kept outside of this life raft. When we are sailing, that equipment will be here with the raft. You wait till the marina manager sees your graffiti in his walls. Yeah. Our chain has arrived, 75 meters of 12 mil. And we're color coding it and zip tying it. Blue, yellow, red? Blue, yellow, red. Hmm. Okay. This is zip ties you asked for. <clears throat> and it weighs 220 kilos, according to the uh, weighing label. 
and then we have to get it to the boat. So we've launched the dinghy. Hopefully we can get this into the dinghy. I'm not killing ourselves. 220 kilos. Nat can bench press 220 kilos, obviously, but I'm going to struggle. Yeah. You told everyone you used to be a baker. Yeah. Because you certainly weren't a paint sprayer. <laughs> Having completed marking the chain so we know what depth of chain we've let out at anchor, we load everything into the dinghy and take it to the bow of the yacht. First, we have to clear the bow roller. So we have to disconnect our main anchor from the chain. With the old rusty chain still being in the locker, we use the windlass to pull the new chain up and lay it out on deck. So with the new chain on deck, we reconnect the swivel and the anchor to the new chain. With the shackles all done up very tightly, we use seizing wire to stop the pins from working loose. So I have to contend with. Hey, I'm helping. If I let go of that, it'll just tip over. You are very important, Ant. Yeah. No, I don't want to look. I'm waiting to see you slide off. Okay, up slowly. <laughs> With the anchor reconnected, we can now pull it back into position into the bowsprit. With the dinghy empty, we can now take the old chain out of the locker to take ashore. There's never any tension on that shackle, hence you can get away with a tiny one. It's only to stop the chain going over the side. If it's... This is all rusty flakes. And all that happens is once it starts coming up on deck, is that as soon as it gets wet, especially with salt water, it just leaves a mess absolutely everywhere. We're doing this chain. Today's job, because it's a boat, so there's always jobs. Um, I've already stripped out my parts bins that are normally sitting here and pulled the floor panel up because I wanted to inspect in here. Look down, this piece of ply is badly bowed out because the frame is no longer any good. So yours truly needs to get that piece of ply out 
and make a new frame. And that is what I intend doing. That is my job for the next couple of days. And the reason I'm doing this is that we've got some plywood left over from the roof. As you know, we've just refurbed the cabin and I don't want to put that bit of plywood back. But it's a good size, so I don't want to throw it away either. It's too expensive. So I'm going to use it in here. just means I have to do a job that I had no intentions of doing, really. Um, yeah, so now we need to make this triangular section to go in there, which has got loads of funky angles on it. We'll then rebuild that one over there as well because that's quite weak. Okay, let's see what the dream team have been up to. Oh, look at that new floor. Oh no. Just because I painted it here and made it look all nice, what on earth are you doing? Just checking. You don't even fit in that hole. Oh, I know, that's a problem. Routine maintenance. Passing the camera over. <clears throat> yeah okay so let's show you what I found so we know oh, lights off we know that we've got movement on our windlass and I noticed a crack in the teak block that the windlass sits on now our deck is made up of steel frames with uh, GRP fiberglass on top of it to reduce the weight of a steel boat that's how it was made back in the 70s the forward section of the boat obviously is intended to take the stresses and the strains of both the rig and impacts and it has to be a lot stronger so the four peak where the anchor locker is is actually solid steel uh six mil plate on the top sections and unfortunately unfortunately um yeah that just there is the wood of the deck as is that there so it's time for us to go in the boatyard and we will cut this section of steel out and replace it with some new steel. That I knew it was bad up there, but and that needs sorting out. So I guess we'll do that when we pull out in the boatyard. Hmm. More fun and games. Okay, so this is our fridge pump. Uh, this is the old one that's kind of died a death on us. That's just catching any excess water that's just in the pipe. It's all above sea level, water level, so this is literally just what's in the system as opposed to it flowing in from outside. So I've already added the correct connectors onto the wiring. So now it should be a simple Attach it all together. <laughs> okay, here goes. So let's see if there's any leaks and if it works. Using Ian's trick, just putting some paper towel under each side, and if it leaks, we can quite easily from the paper towel. Now these are self-priming pumps so it should in theory prime itself and we should have water coming out over the side of the boat. <laughs> started fitting the fridge pump Ian said oh that's a boy job like girls can't do things like that we've now got the best flow through our fridge system than we've ever had so skipper how did the apprentice do well I suppose if I had to score you out of 10 I'd give you one <laughs> <laughs> now on the job I'd say you were pretty good on the job <laughs> Oh, the fridge. You want to know how the fridge the went? The fridge pump. Um, yeah. Straight swap. Did a really good job. 
both hoses are on, doesn't leak, and forcing out water, which is good. And it's the best he's ever seen it, horsing water out the side. It is, actually. We've had a lot of pumps on there. Um, I think the biggest problem over the years has been that hose that we changed. Yeah. Whether that hose was furred up and clogged up and not allowing water flow through. So, so Apprentice, job. 10 out of 10. Thank you to everybody that supports us on Ko-fi and on Patreon. For those of you that are looking for a free way to support our videos, please give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe and ding the bell to get notifications.